How's everybody doing today? And as you can see, we're going to do another postseason rebuild. This time, we're going to be doing the St. Louis Cardinals. You guys absolutely showed so much support on the last one. So let's do it again. Make sure you hit that like button. Subscribe if you're new and enjoy the content. And the roster that I used, you guys always ask which roster I use. And this time, I'm going to be using one from a subscriber, Ian Davis. So in the username, you can when you search for the roster in the roster vault, search IC Davis and then go to the most recent one he literally just updated it on the 12th of january so it is up to date on all free agency moves all moves that have happened so far and the ross and the ratings are actually pretty decent so i'm liking what i'm i, I picked that roster it looked really good and it was all caught up to date on all off-season moves so we're going to be doing the cardinals they definitely made some big moves in the off-season acquiring paul goldschmidt andrew miller was another one that they did so they're definitely looking like a pretty strong team in the NL Central, which sucks. I'm a Cubs fan. I really don't want that to happen. So looking at the roster as a whole, these first three pitchers, I think we're good here. You know, I like, you know, we got a 22-year-old who's 84 in Jack Flaherty. We got Miles here, Michael Walker. So right here, we're looking pretty solid. Adam Wainwright, probably going to re replace Alex Reyes. I don't think he's ready just yet. I'm going to give him one more season in the minors and then maybe call him up. But we definitely need at least one more starting pitcher before uh, we get into the season because I definitely want to strengthen up that starting rotation. Looking in the relief, um, Andrew Miller is probably going to be our closer. We have Luke Gregerson who, I don't know, I might keep him, I might not. Bud Norris is probably a player I'm going to be looking to move on from. Brett Cecil, probably another player that's going to be traded. Jordan Hicks will keep him around even though his control is absolutely horrible. Dominic Leone, or Leone. We'll see. He's in the minors, but he might be a player we trade. John Brebbia is another player I'm not too sure about. And then down here, doesn't look too exciting. Um, closing pitchers, we got Carlos Martinez. We'll probably use him as a setup man, though, um, and let Andrew Miller take the closing spot. Yadier Molina, I'm not moving him. He's, he's just too too iconic to the Cardinals to trade. Um, Paul Goldschmidt, Jed Jerko are probably going to be those players that we keep around um, as long as they perform. Most likely, Paul Goldschmidt. He's just too good. Um, and there really aren't that many big name first basemen that would replace him. Um, and Jed Jerko is not a bad bench bat to have. Uh, Colton Wong, I'm not sure. We'll have to see if he develops any more, but we might need a new second baseman. Matt Carpenter, as long as he doesn't decrease, we'll keep him around. He definitely has some pop off the bat. Paul DeYoung, Yairo Munoz, both very talented shortstops. If Paul DeYoung's fielding could get a little bit better in real life, he definitely could be a pretty solid shortstop. Yairo Munoz. We'll have to see how he develops. Um, left field, we got Tyler O'Neill, Marcelo Zuna. I think as long as Tyler O'Neill develops, we don't really need to look for another left fielder um, because Marcelo Zuna is a really good player, but I'd rather get Tyler O'Neill into the team. So we'll have to see how quickly he develops. Um, Harrison Bader, he's our second, or he's not, our, he's not a second baseman. He's our center fielder. And then we do have Dexter Fowler, but I think we're going to have to trade him, unfortunately. And then Jose Martinez, Adalas Garcia, we're probably in need of a new right fielder. So right fielder and a starting pitcher are probably the areas we need the biggest help like immediately. Outside of that, I don't really see too many moves being made right away. Obviously, Bryce Harper's available, Manny Machado, Adam Adovino, Kimbrel, Keiko, Gio Gonzalez. And there's some pretty decent players out here. A player that I was thinking about. Avisel Garcia, he's 26, he's 80. Maybe give him a shot here. If you know, if it doesn't work out, we definitely could trade him. Um, but that helps our right field spot because we do need one. Um, and then we, you know, we don't really need to add anybody else. Obviously, shortstop, we have shortstop covered. There's a couple decent names there. Third baseman, we're we're good there. Second base, I'm okay for now. Like we have a really solid team. But uh, yeah, I, I'm like I'm liking what I'm seeing. I'm liking what I'm seeing with this Cardinals team for this rebuild. Uh, like I said, starting pitcher definitely somewhere we need to improve on. Maybe a bullpen arm too, just because these three right here don't really give me too much confidence. But uh, so maybe a bullpen arm, a starter, and then a right fielder. So let's go make those moves happen, and I'll show you them as. Well. Alrighty, so a name I saw was uh Jacob Faria of the Rays, 79. He's 24 years old. Pretty consistent stats for the per nines, and I mean, he's not necessarily 
an amazing pitcher just yet, but I'm hoping he will develop a little bit more. We're trading away uh, Adam Wainwright, Bud Norris, who I know is one of our better relievers, but I think we'll be okay there. And then Edmundo Sosa, who we're, we're kind of backed up here on the shortstop position. Um, I tried to go Alex Mejia, but you can see we're just off on the trade. So we're going to go with Edmundo Sosa. And sometimes he doesn't, um, his potential drops pretty quickly. So I think this is an okay trade. Um, we're getting rid of two aging pitchers and a shortstop who I usually see drop in potential anyway. So to add a pitcher who definitely becomes one of our, you know, probably that fourth spot, I'm okay with that. Um, and he should jump up once he uh, gets past that like little trade decrease that they get in overall. So there's our starter. I'm still looking for a reliever, a right fielder. And then I also noticed we don't have a backup catcher. So we might have to bring in someone for like a season or something from free agency to cover that spot. So let's make those moves. Catch you in a sec. All right, we're going to the Yankees for a reliever in Jonathan Holder, 24 years old, 80, or 80 overall B potential, um, right-handed pitcher, five, five pitch selection. Looks decent overall, good walks and home runs per nine. Um, we're getting rid of John Brebbia. 27 years old, 71 overall. Um, there he is. And then two other players who have C potential and Luke and Baker and Steven uh, Gingery. Gingery? I think it's Gingery or Gingery. I don't know. Um, but Jonathan Holder is our new reliever. Um, I did make one free agent signing. Uh, I'll show you guys. It is um, Martin Maldonado. He should actually... Now he went to the minors. Um, we needed a catcher. And uh, he definitely will be a decent little backup catcher. I signed him to a one-year deal. You guys can see here. One one year, 1 1.5 million. Not too bad at all. Um, and like I said, he's just going to be a backup for Yadier Molina. We're still looking for that right fielder. I looked at um, Avisel Garcia's stats a little bit more. His power is not that good. And I don't know if he'll sign a one-year deal, which I don't know if I really want to do anyways. So we're going to see if we can find another a trade for a right fielder. If not, this will be our backup option. So we'll have to see what we do. Alrighty, so I tried to find a trade that would work. And the one player I was really looking to get um, was Fran Mil Reyes. He's got power, de decent fielding, but he's only 22. He's got A potential, and he's a 78 overall. I tried really hard, but they the only way I could make it happen was if I traded players that I didn't want to get rid of. Um... Um, mostly like some of the starting pitchers, like I don't really want to get rid of Austin Gomber, but they, that was a really big piece that I would have had to trade. Um, another one was like, uh, Adalis Garcia. So you already can see who I signed. I signed Avisel Garcia to a two year deal. Um, if it doesn't work out, we can always trade them at the trade deadline day or the next season. And then we can always try to get, you know, Fran Moreas or another right fielder. Um, another player that I did try to go for was um, Nomar Mazzara. So those were the two players I was trying to add, and I just couldn't get it done. So with that being said, now you guys can see who we brought up um, or who we ended up signing was uh, Avisel Garcia. I'm already forgetting it already. Um, I know we don't really need him, but uh, this allows me to trade Jose Martinez, mostly because I don't really want him. So I'm going to see if I can get maybe like a prospects for some of these older players that we have on the roster. And I'll catch you guys in a sec. All right. So we're going to the Blue Jays. Adam Kloffenstein. Kloffenstein. However you want to say it. We're getting rid of Dexter Fowler and Jose Martinez. Um, 18 years old. 61 overall with a B potential. Not a bad prospect for us to get. Um, and we're getting rid of a lot of salary in this trade too. So we're getting rid of two aging outfielders. Um, I think Jose Martinez was only 29. But I think that's still... I'm okay with that to bring in a pitcher who's 61 overall at the age of 18 already. It's definitely not a bad trade. After all those trades, this is how we are looking. Um, Bader Wong, Goldschmidt Carpenter, DeYoung Garcia, Jed Jerko, Ozuna, and Yadier Molina. The bench looks a little bit better now. We got Yairo Munoz, Greg Garcia, O'Neill, Martin Maldonado. And this is how our rotation and bullpen are looking. Flaherty, Miles, Michael Waka, Jacob Faria, and John Gant. John Gant, I did say I wanted to trade, but um, I might just actually let Alex Reyes come up to the majors. Let's see what he 
does if he goes up or down in rating if i bring him up to the majors he stays about the same it's just i don't want to rush him and then stunt some of his growth so i'm still kind of you know what we will give it a shot we'll let um alex reyes go in the starting rotation and then our bullpen looks currently like this chasing shreve somehow survived unless we have a relief pitcher who could definitely yeah we do have someone else who could fill his spot dominic leone can come up instead of chasing shreve so yeah we're looking a little bit better now you know no lower than a 76 in the bullpen our starting rotation looks decent I'm, I'm liking this you know martinez miller i think that's a good one to set up closer spot I'm, I'm feeling pretty solid with what we have right here obviously we're gonna get through a little bit of scouting but um yeah this looks pretty good so uh once we get to the draft day i'll show you guys all the draft picks that we get and catch you guys once we get there Alrighty, so we're gonna go into the draft here we have a pretty late pick um let's see if any of these guys were some of the ones that we had our eyes on so he was one of them eric sweet just based on his hitting numbers that were projected um he was another one that was potentially like kind of on my board to look at but um i'm gonna i'm already gonna give you a heads up this draft class was a little weak um and, and i scouted a lot i scouted a little bit more than usual because i knew we were gonna have a little bit of a lower pick so i figured we'd be kind of stuck with some lower rated players so I was trying to find someone i was trying to get a little bit more scouting a little bit more a little bit bigger of a player pool to scout from we're gonna go brandon angel out of tennessee this this is a pretty rough draft class i think yeah we're already down into 75 over like potential players and it's it's a pretty rough selection um we'll go brandon mcintyre here um he actually looks pretty well rounded so we'll go with him as the catcher so we have a round three competitive balance pick. Um, like I said, yeah, see, we're third round. This normally doesn't happen. And like I said, I scouted a lot. So I'm a little, little surprised that we're already this low into the draft. So I guess this is probably gonna be one of the worst drafts we've had. We're going Kevin Casto here. And the next pick we'll just we'll try out we'll test out cedric dixon um center fielder with a second and third base secondary position um i really don't know what to expect out of this draft this is this was probably one of the weirdest drafts we've ever had like just because i don't normally have um players like potential this low already um so derek laird was gonna be the player we went there and the last one we're gonna go with in round six I really have no idea um i've been avoiding him actually <laughs> um do we even have any more scouted players we have one benito franco we'll, we'll take him might as well we have him uh scouted so that's the draft this is it was a strange one i don't think i've ever had him go by that quickly um but yeah i mean we got a little bit of an okay couple picks like cedric dixon he's 73 already he's got 85 potential so he's not too bad decent fielding good speed good contact that's for a later round pick that's not a bad um pickup there um brandon angel looks decent 66 overall with that 87 potential but then once you start getting outside of that we're kind of not doing too well so i was kind of hoping brian mcintyre would have been a little bit better but it turns out he's not that good we're gonna let him go michael ellis we'll, we'll give him a shot kevin casto we'll give him a shot and then benito franco we'll give him a shot as well so not the best draft class um we've ever had this is a pretty bad one so let's get into the trade deadline and let's see how it goes all right so as you can see at the deadline we are 62 and 44 we're first in the central by four games which actually puts us in a good spot um i like i like that um this is one thing that i kind of don't like about going into uh um what's it called 
rosters that have high rated free agents because they normally don't get signed the only one that got signed was bryce harper he's currently on the cubs but he's sitting in the minors so that's another issue that uh um bryce harper is in the minors for the cubs i'm thinking about signing manny machado just so that he doesn't continue to decrease in overall um see if he'll sign like a one-year deal and then just hold on to him for this season so let's just see how the team's doing currently. Um, you guys can see Harrison Bader's up to an 81. Colton Wong's up to an 84. So holding on to him isn't actually a bad idea at this point. Um, Paul Goldschmidt is up to a... Oh, he's about at 9. He's still 92, but he's hitting 302 on the year, which is great to see. Matt Carpenter is 88, but some of his stats are going down. Paul DeYoung is going up. I like that. Avisail Garcia is going down. So he may be a player I'm looking to move um jed jerko he wants to start and i can't give him a guaranteed role um hmm that's that's frustrating uh ozuna 272 on the year that's not bad and yadi is going to continue to decrease uh martin maldonado is decreasing as well yaira munoz is up to a 73 greg garcia is a 71 and tyler o'neill is a 71 um i'm gonna see if we can move avisal garcia jack flaherty is up to an 86 286 era is pretty solid 22 for miles and okay i like that michael walker's an 81 his era is a little high jacob faria is uh doing decent and then alex reyes his wins and era is not there but he's he's doing okay obviously i wish it was a little bit better but I don't like that his potential has gone down, but he is an 80 overall, so he should continue to get better and better. Jordan Hicks is a 79. Jonathan Holder has gone down. Why is that? I don't know. I don't know. Brett Cecil's held his rating. Greg Erickson's gone down one. Dominic Leone is a 76. Carlos Martinez is a 91. Okay. And then Andrew Miller is a 95. I'll take that for sure. So maybe maybe since gregerson's decreasing and garcia is de decreasing as well maybe trade them for a a relief pitcher so let's see if we can make that happen Alrighty. so what i'm thinking here is we're gonna get rid of juan yepes <clears throat> um obviously garcia for taylor hearn who's 23 years old 65 overall b potential and corbin burns of normally i'm pretty sure he's from the brewers but i think he got traded to the rangers at this point He's more of a long reliever. Um, and then I know we're not really getting a lot in like high overall in return, but we're getting two players who are young, who have potential. And I'm thinking they could possibly be trade pieces down the line. Plus Garcia is just not cutting it. Um, obviously, El Garcia, we do have a Dallas Garcia, who's a 71 overall. And we also have Tyler O'Neill, who I'm willing to give time to to let them develop a little bit this season so i'm thinking for right now that's okay and then right now we'll just leave this how it is and then see if those players that we just traded food traded for develop a little bit maybe maybe trade like leone or gregerson but i think for right now we're, we're doing pretty good already at the end of the season we finished 93 and 70 we won our division we're gonna be taking on the winner of the wild card so let's see how that finished we finished one game above the cubs and in the wild card you can see the cubs and the rockies um the dodgers won the west the mets won the east okay the red red sox and astros are the wild card the angels won the west indians won the central and the east was won by the yankees so pretty solid um group of winners there marcelo zuna won gold glove scherzer was the mvp and so is Justin Upton. Okay. And then Cy Young went to Sale and Scherzer. So let's see how we did as a team. Um, Jack Flaherty, a sub three ERA is amazing to see. Nowadays, he's up to an 88 overall. He went 11 12 on the year. Miles down to an 81. Why is that? Hmm. But 260 ERA, 13 and 5, definitely not horrible. Michael Walker, 82 overall, 15 and 10. The 410 411 ERA 410 for Jacob Faria, not too bad. Alex Reyes, obviously a little bit rough of a rough season, but 
hopefully he can progress over the offseason and get a little bit better jordan hicks is up to an 80 not horrible definitely not horrible jonathan holder is going down so this might be someone i'm looking to move in the offseason brett cecil's held about the same luke gregson's gone down as well dominic leone's actually gone up carlos martinez is still going up which is great and then andrew miller is doing pretty solid so these two are just a great little one-two punch to close out a game Bader's up to an 82 colton wong is an 82 uh, paul goldschmidt 26 homers on the year 312 average can't complain about that mark matt carpenter's actually gone up what all right not a bad year for him paul de 241 99 ribbies tyler o'neill's gone up three ratings since we put him in the second half of the season but his potential's gone down hmm Jed Jerko's gone up one rating. Marcelo Zuna's held about the same, and Yadier Molina's dropping very quickly. So we might need to find a catcher while we can. <clears throat> um, Greg Garcia, Yairo, and Martin Maldonado. Okay, not not horrible. Definitely not horrible. And I mean, I can't complain because we did make the postseason. Austin Gomber is a 73. Uh, the guy we traded for is, I think, gone up a rating since we traded for him. And then Kloppenstein, Kloppenstein's gone up a little bit since we traded for him as well. Corbin Burns has gone up a couple ratings since we acquired him. Um, let's see. Drew Robinson, 66. Uh, let's see. Yairo, 74. Mejia's got A potential, but I don't really think he's going to grow too much more. Uh, Eros Arena's a 66. And Adalas Garcia's a 72. So he might be a player that we use next season as like a bench bat, the platoon outfielder. Kind of like O'Neal was before we traded away Garcia. So, going into the playoffs, we're going to be playing the Cubs. So, it's a central matchup. We lost the first. We won the second. Won the third. Um, oh, it's an all or nothing game here. Let's let's get into it. Let's, um, let's quick manage it. We are the home team, which is good. We're playing against my beloved Cubs, though, which I don't like. But we're going to put Flaherty. Uh, do we want Flaherty on the mound? Yeah, we kind of feel like we need to. You guys can see their lineup there. They acquired DJ LeMayhew. They have Zobrist, Chris Bryant, Javi Baez, Anthony Rizzo, Wilson Contreras, Ian Happ. The pitcher spot, Cole Hamels, and Jason Hayward. So still no Chris Bryant, which is weird because they signed him. Why would you not use him? But let's get into this game. A walk. Come on. All right, we get out of that inning. Bader, Wong, and Goldschmidt go down. One, two, three. Carpenter goes down. De Jong strikes out. Ooh, a double. Two out double. All right. And we're up one to nothing thanks to Tyler O'Neill. There we go. That's what I like to see. Um. Okay. All right. Still only two hits in the game. Really? This is a, a pretty quiet game so far. Jeez. All right, there's a hit. The pitcher got a hit. You got to be kidding me. So, Bader, Wong, anybody? Come on, guys. We're, you know, we're entering. Uh-oh. Two outs, though. It's a 1-1 one, one game. We got we to gotta change. We can't be messing around here. Please. Yeah, it gets out of the inning. Okay, so it's a 1-1 one, one game. We got the heart of our lineup now. Strikeout. Carpenter grounds out. And De Jong grounds out. Gregerson, come on. Really? You're going to do that here. Bottom eight. Ozuna versus Edwards. Flies out. Flies out. And a strikeout. Are we... This is really going to happen here? Like this? All right. So, they're probably going to bring in their closer. So, we're just going to bring in Jed Jerko. So, Steve Ciszek is up. To, on the mound for them, I should say. We're down one. Okay, that's a good single. We're going to pinch run. Who's got the most speed? Yairo's going to pinch pinch run. Bader strikes out. Wong singles. Okay, first and second. Paul Goldschmidt, can you deliver here? Flies out. <sighs> and we lose on a Jason Hayward home run. You... Oh, who's going to win? Let's see. We got the Dodgers versus the Yankees. The Dodgers currently have a one-game lead. The Cubs ended up getting swept by the Dodgers. And the Dodgers did defeat the Yankees in the World Series. So let's see who won. 
Andrew Benatendi. Okay, so he was traded. So he's he was the MVP of that. So let's let's get into the offseason. We're gonna need a new hitting coach. We're we're this close. We're this close. We need to we need to figure something out here. Arbitration was offered to Ozuna, Waka, Leone, and or Leone and Garcia. The other two are gonna you know I'm gonna let them walk. Contracts. <clears throat> Um, they're probably going to be offered to everybody. Maybe not Gantt, but everybody else will definitely get a contract. Alrighty, so the trade to make to start, actually, the trade we're going to make to start season two is Miles is going to be traded. He's just dropping in overall, and I don't really understand it. Um, Brett Cecil as well, and I'm going to tell you why we did that. And then a low reliever in Jacob Evans for Aaron Sanchez of the Blue Jays, 26 years old, 84 overall be potential so the reason i'm getting rid of one of our relievers is because in the rule five draft i had edubre ramos available to me as an option so i decided to pick him up so you can see our bullpen's looking a little bit stronger i like the way our um i wouldn't say it's looking the bullpen's looking a little bit stronger it's looking pretty similar um i do may want to move on from dominic leone he did hold rating so maybe he'll do the same jonathan holder is a player that kind of worried me last season so i might trade him and then the rotation st should still continue to increase in rating just because we're most of them, actually all of them are, what, 27 or younger? Yeah, 27 or younger, 26 or younger. So they should continue to go up in rating. And then our lineup currently looks like this. I don't think we really need to make any changes. The one player that I am worried about is Yadier Molina. He's just going to continue to decrease in rating. Outside of that, I'm pretty comfortable with who we have and, you know, the, the players that you know we currently have basically i just said the same thing twice so looking at that um we'll look at the players that we currently have in our farm system kloppenstein is a 64 taylor hearns a 66 who we traded for um and you guys can see the rest of them corbin burns is another player we could also bring up i might give him one more season in the minors um actually he's about the same rating so let's see if if we bring him up if he'll go up and rating because sometimes if you bring up a player i might trade leone and just use corbin burns then that might actually work a little bit better and then maybe move hicks here and then just trade leone oh i might might work there um closer benito franco was a player that we we did draft i remember that brandon angel was another player we drafted um but you guys can see we don't really have a a good backup catcher there so we might go look for a backup catcher i think that's like the one spot that we need the most or just a catcher who can start for us adalas garcia is up to a 72 like i've mentioned before i think so let's see if we can find maybe a starting catcher a backup catcher and go from there are right, we going for tony walters of the rockies 26 73 overall like i said i was looking for someone who could you know back up yadi and Rolina, and we basically got it right here um, I'm going to see if I can move um, Dominic Leone and then see if we can maybe get a prospect. And then that way we have some trade pieces if we do need to make some sort of big trade in the future. Uh, we don't really need a center fielder, but uh, I, this is too good to pass up. Monte Harrison, B potential, almost a 70. He's a 67 overall. Uh, Emil Navarro, A potential for these two 50 overalls and Dominic Leone. It's just too good of a trade to pass up. It's good prospects. Um, so this is how the team's going to line up this season. Um, I don't really want Monte Harrison up. So we're going to send him down. Uh, let's send him down real quick. We'll send him to AAA. And uh, yeah, I feel like now we're kind of set. I think this team's looking just really well-rounded. We got a lot of youth in the team. So we probably won't need to make too many more moves going forward. I mean... Tyler O'Neill's our lowest rated player besides Jed Jerko, and he doesn't even start all the time. So, I mean, looking at the team, I think we're pretty set. Um, Molina's going to be a player I'm definitely going to keep my eye on because he's going to drop pretty quickly. Um, Matt Carpenter's another player I'm going to have my eye on just in case he starts to decrease in rating. But overall, I'm, I'm liking what we have here. The rotation is pretty, pretty good as well. Yeah, I'm liking this. I hope Ramos goes up and not down in rating. But that's really it for now. I, I'm liking the moves we made. Let's see how this season goes. Already at the deadline day, you guys can see here, we are first in the central three games above the Cubs. 
we'll see how the CPU did in the draft. Gross. We're not going to sign any single one of them. <clears throat> any single one of them. So you guys can see the team here looking pretty good. Molina's going down pretty quickly, which is expected. Um, but I'm going to I'm gonna keep him as long as possible. Um, I, it might be time to move on from him, unfortunately. So we'll have to see how it goes here. So O'Neal, he's an 81. He looks pretty good. Wong's looking good. Goldschmidt's looking good. Carpenter's looking good. He's up to an 89. 84 for De Jong. Osuna's up to a 87. So he's gone up. Uh, Jed Jerko, Molina, and Bader. I don't know why Bader dropped down here, but okay, I guess. Um, the bench is looking decent. You know, Munoz, Garcia, Jerko, and Walters. Um, everyone's actually hitting pretty well off the bench. And then looking at the rotation, you guys can see everything here. Alex Reyes is interesting because he's just not really developing. And I think it's mostly because of his walks per nine. His walks per nine are probably just really high. So it's it's hurting, you know, the sim style whole thing. So it, it might be a player I trade just because I don't think he's going to ever do really good in this franchise in real life i think he may end up living up to the hype but i just don't know if he'll do it in this franchise flaherty's doing pretty well a 288 era 265 for waka faria's at a three which is pretty solid and aaron sanchez is doing all right corbin burns is doing okay in this long relief role um could be a little bit better jonathan holders he's still going down in rating he's actually kind of started to like even out kind of plateau so i can't complain there gregerson it's time to move on from him Jordan Hicks is up to an 86. Adubre Ramos has gone up one. Martinez, looking like he's kind of plateaued, but I mean, I can't complain. He's still got a 165 ERA. And Andrew Miller is looking like he's having a little bit of a rough time this season. High ERA for a closer. Um, overall, I'm definitely liking what I'm seeing. Gomber's up to a 64. Emil Navarro, the guy we traded for, is up to a 69. Um, did I say Gomber? Gomber is 74. Yeah. Hearn's up to a 68. We traded for him. I remember that. Um, and then who's the other guy we traded for? Kloppenstein. He's up to a 64. Um, no one really down here um, looks too surprising. And Hell is up to a 68, which is good to see. Um, let's see. Drew Robinson, 67, which is okay. And then outside of that, let's see. Arizona is a 68. This rookie is looking really good. 74 overall. Is he a rookie? I'm pretty sure this is the rookie that we dra we, we drafted, right? Yeah, we drafted him. Cedric Dixon, yeah. Monte Harrison's potential has gone down, which is unfortunate to see since we just traded for him. But he's looking really good. So I might... Ooh, Adalas Garcia is looking pretty good too. I might let Dixon develop a little bit more. Maybe move him to AAA. No, we'll keep him there. And then just for the bench bat for this, for the rest of the season, let's bring up Adalas Garcia and see how he does. And then who do we say we needed? Gregerson was a player we needed to trade. And I don't want to do it. Um, so we'll keep it. Yada, yada. But we definitely need another bullpen arm since Gregerson is starting to decrease. So we're bringing in Randall Delgado of the Diamondbacks. 80 overall, 29 years old. He hit, he's a free agent after this season, but he shouldn't decrease too much in overall. We're getting rid of Luke Gregerson, Zach Jackson, and Connor Green. Connor Green and Zach Jackson are C potential players. So, I mean, I don't really see them going up too much in overall. Plus, they were around like the low 60s, high 50s. So with that move whoops we are pretty set now i don't really want to make any other switches maybe let them both work this spot right here alex reyes i'll let this like his season finish see how he finishes the season if he does well i'll keep him if not i'll try to move him for season three on our last push to win a world series title so let's see how the rest of the season goes nothing was changed to the lineup and uh yeah let's see how this one goes Alrighty, so this season we were a wild card team we had a pretty rough second half of the season we still finished 88 and 74 and we're taking on the phillies so let's see if anything changed everything's still to say the same here um it looks like the bench did all right colton or colton wong tyler o'neill finished 244 average 25 homers 65 ribbies can't complain especially since he went up in rating colton wong is an 85 overall 265 hitter not bad there paul goldschmidt's going up as well 36 homers 106 ribbies 
and then Matt Carpenter 256, De Jong 276 with 25 homers, 84 ribbies. Ozuna did pretty well. Jed Jerko probably not going to increase too much more, and he's mostly because he's not an everyday player. So I mean, as long as he's not at that an everyday player, he's not going to increase in rating. Yadi and then Harrison Bader there. Okay, not too bad. And then it's looking like Reyes will probably be moved next season just because he's not really doing too well. Aaron Sanchez, wish it would have been a little bit better, but I guess I can't complain too much. Jacob Faria hasn't gone up too much more, which is disappointing to see. Michael Walker, and then Jack Flaherty. So it's looking like our starters kind of dipped after the second half of the season. Randall Delgado, Corbin Burns there. Holder's going down again. Okay, so he might be another player we're looking to move now. Jordan Hicks, 85. Edubre Ramos, they both performed pretty well this season. Carlos Martinez did well. And Andrew Miller's second half of the season went a little bit better. So overall, a little disappointing. I'm not going to lie. Very, pretty disappointing compared to how we started the first half of the season. So we did win an award. Okay. Another gold glove for Marcelo Zuna. Reese Hoskins was the MVP for the National League. Chris Sale was for the American League. So obviously he's going to win the Cy Young. And Dick Rahm won it for the National League. Okay. So I already have a little bit of an idea of who I want to move on. Alex Reyes is looking like a player. Jonathan Holders, probably another player we're looking to move. And then we may need to move on from Yadi Molina. So right now, we got this one game versus the Phillies. We're going to Philadelphia for this one. We're going to have Flaherty on the mound. We're probably going to have to up our starting pitching as well. So we'll have to see how this game goes. Double play to end the inning. Okay, and now we're down one nothing already in the first. Down two nothing in the first. Not a good start for us. We do get a double there, but there are two outs. Bader, bases loaded for the pitcher. <laughs> of course. What what is going on? We're down four nothing already. Jesus. Okay, De Jong. Somebody do something. What is going on here? So, end of the fourth. We're just, I guess, not hitting the ball. What's going on? Like, we're just not doing well. Maybe this a little bit of a slump to end this season. This is just not good. All right, so we're going against a righty. We don't, we'll go Greg Garcia here. And he hits it to a double play. You got to be kidding me. All right, we'll bring in Jordan Hicks. What is just no one wants Gene Segura. You let Gene Segura take you deep? What? What? So we got absolutely rocked by the Phillies. I don't even want to talk about it. We're simming the rest of the playoffs. And let's just get into season. The Phillies won. Okay. A post a wild card team goes all the way and won the World Series. <laughs> okay, I guess they're really good. Jeez, holy cow! I mean, all right, let's uh let's get into this off season because this second half of the season went horribly. Alrighty, so free agent negotiations. You guys can see in the bottom right the contracts we have to offer, and we're in a bit of a pickle here because. We may not be able to afford every single one of these. All right, so arbitration was offered for all three of these players here. Um, contracts wise, luckily we don't have any big contracts, so we're just gonna offer all of them. And then we'll get into free agency if we make any moves. If not, I'll see you guys at the start of season three. All right, so as much as I don't wanna get rid of Yadi Molina, um, like he's really the one, but he's making almost eight million a year. So I think it's time to move on from him. We're getting an ace in Madison Bumgarner. We're also getting rid of Alex Reyes, who I did say I wanted to move on from as well. He's just not developing and performing as, a, as I would have hoped, unfortunately. We're also getting rid of Drew Robinson, 27 years old. He's under a 70. He's probably not gonna increase too much more, if at all. This is a good trade for us. I, I, it's, it, we're getting mad bum. Like you can't complain about that at all. We're getting an actual ace. So now this is what we're looking like which is a little bit stronger, just a little bit, you know? And then Jonathan Holder was another player I wanna move on from or find a trade for. So I think that's what I gotta do there. And then like Tony Walters is a is an 80. Um, Tyler O'Neill is a 78, but 
give me a second. I'll fix that. I moved him to a right fielder, but if I move him back to a left fielder, he'll go up to a 80, I believe he was. So yeah, he's an 81 there. We got Jed Jerko there. Like the lineup looks good. You know, on the bench, we got these guys who performed very well for us last season as bench bats. Um, so let's see if if we take out Holder there, we still have a decent amount of pitchers. I still kind of think we need one more. I might leave. Yeah, maybe one more bullpen arm. Let's see if we can find that bullpen arm. Alrighty, Jonathan Machado, Alejandro Chassin, and Jonathan Holder for Joe Jimenez of the Tigers. 83 overall for us um, is what we're getting. We're getting rid of Holder. Like I said, he's just... He's not doing it anymore and it's time to move on so this is what we currently look like i just showed you the lineup not too long ago and then with the addition of joe jimenez the team's looking good um i'm liking what i'm seeing everyone's an 80 except for faria i think faria will still go up though um we're looking a lot stronger um really the only place we could probably get a little bit better is the outfield but even then it's still looking pretty strong uh i just I don't know or maybe a new second baseman i'll see if there's a new second baseman if not we'll just go through the rest of the season and see how it goes all right so we're really trying to solidify this starting rotation mike clevenger for nolan gorman jacob faria and austin gomber They're, these are the kind of our two pitchers i'm okay moving we still have um emil navarro and a couple other names down here who are developing pretty quickly um I'm, i was looking at it and i felt like our rotation was kind of like the one spot that was lacking the most and yeah we could definitely upgrade from aaron sanchez bullpen probably could be a little bit stronger as well but i'm confident i feel like this is a season we could definitely do a lot better than last season so let's get into it see how it goes it may not be like the most star studded lineup but in terms of being able to rebuild it and set it up for the future i think it's pretty solid um you know goldschmidt is 32 and carpenters 34 but outside of that it's a pretty decently young team you know o'neill walters bader de young um wong uh we got adalas garcia greg garcia yaro munoz and then we def we even have uh this guy cedric dixon who i'm actually going to call up and see how he does um this season because i feel like he could be decent as well um so we might have to make a trade at the deadline day but for right now i feel pretty comfortable i'll see you guys at deadline day already in the central we're currently seven and a half games behind the cubs the cubs are actually doing pretty solid right now um we are the second team in the wild card by one game and you guys can see the phillies are one game behind us there so draft picks cpu did pretty badly once again and then looking at our team you guys can see this right here aaron sanchez is probably a player i'm looking to move um but Madison Bumgarner is a 93, which is amazing to see. Clevenger is up to a 90. Um, Walker's at 87. Flaherty's an 86. And Aaron Sanchez is the lone one who's kind of going down almost. Randall Delgado is an 80, but he's got a high ERA. So it's crazy because Corbin Burns has another high ERA, but I might put him there. Jordan Hicks is an 85. Jimenez, 79. Ramos, 82. Carlos Martinez is starting to go down, even though he's performing really well. So I don't understand why he's expecting to be a closer. And I mean, I guess and An Andrew Miller is going down too. Mm. Yikes. All right. Colton Wong's cold. He's going down in potential. He's a 206 hitter. Harrison Bader's 276, 84 overall. Okay. Goldschmidt, 272, 15 homers. Starting to decrease a little bit. Paul DeYoung's going up though almost matches home run count from last year already matt carpenter is starting to decrease why i don't understand that uh ozuna's at 89 jerko's 77 it's looking like the bats are a little cold here low 200s for the averages the dallas garcia is not hitting the ball well cedric dixon's doing all right he's a 75 greg garcia is not hitting the ball well and yairo munoz is doing pretty solid so it's looking like the bats are a little quiet this season which is interesting to see uh emil navarro is a 73 okay that's a good thing to see there our two closers that we drafted are there so i'm trying to see if any prospects could be brought up to help us out um it's not looking like it so new starter 
maybe new second baseman too. Let's see if we can swing that. All right, we're getting Yusei Kikuchi, the newly signed in real life Mariners pitcher, 86 overall for Aaron Sanchez, Randall Delgado, and Justin Williams. Um, Randall Delgado is just not pitching well this year. Um, Aaron Sanchez the same. And then um, we have a lot of good field outfielders already. We have like Cedric Dixon, Monta Harrison. He's a 70, even though he's lost some potential. We still have Aaron Arena here. So I'm okay letting one of our outfield prospects go. So that strengthens our starting rotation a little bit. Um, that does kind of leave us one spot open, but I think the bullpen should do just okay or should do just fine with that change. But I mean, once Kikuchi gets past the trade, like decreasing overall that it happens, I think we're looking good. You know, we the bats just need to pick it up. I think that's the big thing. So let's see how the rest of the season goes. Catch you guys at the end. Already we're acquiring Jonathan Scope of the Twins now, 88 overall. We need a better hitting second baseman. Um, Scope's hitting about 30 points higher than Colton Wong is. Um, we're getting rid of Genesis Carrera, Matt Schrock, Max Schrock, and then obviously Colton Wong as well. Um, about the same age, but Scope's five overalls higher. Um, I know it just said that he's an 84. He's, he's better than an 84 overall. Um, so that means we need to move the lineup around a little bit, but even then I'm feeling I'm feeling pretty good feeling pretty good about everything. So um, I guess we'll just put scope in the two spot that might work for us Rotations looking good. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling like this is pretty good for us now um, We have nobody in AAA apparently but now that I made this trade I know I said I was gonna go straight to the end of the season but I feel like we're doing a little bit better now I feel like we're pretty solid here so um, I just feel a little bit better now that we actually have a good hitting second baseman so now let's go to the end of the season and hopefully make the playoffs not as a, uh, a wild card team alrighty so we were a wild card team again we're taking on the Diamondbacks so we were 88 and 74 we finished 10 games behind the Cubs and we Okay, we were four games, three games, four games behind in the wild card for the first spot. So the Dodgers won the West, the East were the Phillies, the wild card for the AL was the Yankees Athletics, Astros won the West, Indians won the Central, the Red Sox won the East. We had a league leader, Bumgarner had five shutouts, and uh, Ozuna again won a left field gold glove. So Cy Young and MVP for Kershaw. Uh, Stanton won the MVP and Cy Young went to Chris Sale once again. So looking at the lineup, Bader's up to a 86. He hit 273 on the year, 27 home runs. Okay. Jonathan Scope, we just got him. So, I mean, it's kind of hard to see. Goldschmidt starting to, to, starting to decrease, which is unfortunate. Paul DeYoung's still increasing though. So he's gone up every single season, it looks like. Uh, Matt Carpenter starting to decrease as well, even though he just had one of his best seasons. Marcelo Zuna's going down as well. And it sucks because these two players just got paid. So they're definitely players we would have to trade for the next season. Jerko's a 78. Tyler O'Neill's up to an 82. And Tony Walters is an 81. Dallas Garcia, 77. Uh, 173 average. Yikes. Greg Garcia and Yairo Munoz. Yairo's almost an 80. So you guys can see the stats for everybody hitting wise. It was okay. Madison Bumgarner's a 93. He's still kind of holding that rating. He did pretty solid for us. Um, Clevenger's an 89, which is good to see. Uh, okay season. You know, Michael Walker, similar numbers. Um, Jack Flaherty had a pretty rough year. Wow. And then Yusei Kikuchi, still around that 81 mark. Corbin Burns, yikes, starting to go down. Emil Navarro was that rookie with a potential that we have. I guess he was called up. Um, Jordan Hicks, Joe Jimenez. Ramos, Martinez, and Miller. It looks like these two were still pretty solid going as a one-two punch at the end. Um, and he's starting to decrease in rating as well. So we do have some older players that would need to be traded for the next season. But I think we're still looking at a pretty solid team overall. And uh, going into the playoffs, I don't know. I really don't know. I felt like this team would perform a little bit better with what we have. But it hasn't you know it's kind of scary to think about so let's get into this game against the diamondbacks we are going to be away team so their team is um weaver i can't see the i think it's weaver taiwan walker zach granke 
Will Ross, and then they're, they're so they're going with four starting pitchers, and then Archie Bradley is one of their starters, I guess. And then we got Madison Bumgarner. Their lineup is Whit Merrifield, AJ Pollock, David Peralta, Didi Gregorius, Steven Sousa Jr., um, Eduardo Escobar at third, Dalton Varsho at catcher, Josh Prince at first, and then I guess Archie Bradley starting. I don't really understand that move, but okay. Jonathan Scope gets a single there, and that's going to be it for right there. So, I mean, they have a start, a closer on the mound almost. So, I mean, we should be able to get him out within a couple innings. So we got to take advantage of it, and we get thrown out at home. Bases are loaded. Harrison Bader is hit by a pitch. And as you can see, Archie Bradley's stamina is pretty low already. So, I mean, I feel like we should be in a good spot. I don't really understand what's going on here. And, uh... We had the bases loaded with one out, and we didn't take advantage of that. So they bring in some uh, some relievers now, and we're only up three, which isn't a lot. We definitely could. Okay, we're up four now thanks to Ozuna, but I was gonna say three. Anything can happen, and we get out of that. So a th their third pitcher already. Bumgarner's pitching pretty well. I'm gonna keep him going as long as possible. So heading into the seventh. He gets, ooh, it's a two-run game. All right, he gets us out of there. That's probably, uh, he's coming up to bat. So that's definitely his last at or last inning. We're up by three now. We're going to pinch hit. It's got Nishik, so we're going to let Gary Garcia hit. There we go. First and second, no outs. We bring in some more insurance runs, and it is a seven to two ball game. We bring in, we bring in Ramos here. He walks his first batter, walks his third batter Ooh, getting a little scary now getting a little scary thank you all right so we closed it out seven to five it should not have been that close jonathan scope had four ribbies that game and we are taking on the Dodgers so the playoff picture I guess I should have showed you guys the playoff picture here you guys can see it we're taking on the Dodgers the Cubs and Phillies are playing the Indians and Astros and then the Red Sox and the Athletics so going into the calendar we have Clevenger versus Kershaw we lost Walker versus Bueller we lost if we lose this season is over man we are just so, something wasn't clicking with this team which I don't understand because I feel like we have a strong lineup um, but you guys can see the Dodgers here. I'll show you their pitching. Urias, Kershaw, Bueller, Stripling, and Teheran. We're going to bring in Bumgarner for this one. They have Chris Taylor, Andrew Toll, Seager, Benatendi, Muncy, Chad Pinder, I believe that is, Salvador Perez, Tyler Goodell, and then obviously Urias. This is the lineup we're going to go with. It's our best lineup. We need Mad Bum to do pretty well this game. Gets us out of that. All right. We're facing a lefty too, and I feel like we got a lot of righties in the lineup. We should hit the ball pretty well, but so far, it's not going too well. All right, Tyler O'Neill in a double play. Oh my gosh. And it is a one run ball game thanks to a sack fly. Jonathan Scope gets on. Two back to back double plays after we get base runners. We can't have that. That is hurting us so much. All right, sixth inning, still a one-run game. Scope, Goldschmidt, DeYoung, Osuna. Like, we have two hits this game. Uh, what is going on? And I feel like we need to take Mad Bum out. But he's pitching so well, you know what I mean? And that's game. And like that's not even a bad spot to leave Mad Bum in. We just got absolutely destroyed by Urias, which I don't understand. This lineup has look at power, power, good contact hitting, good contact hitting, good stats, good stats, good stats. And we're hitting what? Zero. 67, 133, 200. Osuna, two is, I think, our highest average. Oh, scope, pr pretty well. Jerko, didn't even get in at bat. 
um, 267-250. So we had, what, half our lineup hit like 200 or less? That's just unacceptable. And like, that's just so bad. So bad. So bad. I can't believe that just happened. So let's see. I, this might be one of our roughest. The Red Sox defeated the Dodgers. This might be one of our roughest uh, rebuilds, even though the team should be doing so much better. Like, this starting rotation is solid. This lineup, really solid. It should be doing a lot better. But it just didn't. You know, the cards weren't in our favor, I guess, this time. You know, the stars weren't aligned. But I hope you guys enjoyed this rebuild. This postseason rebuild of the St. Louis Cardinals. They've made some moves in real life that I think are really going to benefit them this season. They're going to be a tough, tough team in the NL Central. But so I think that's it, guys. Yeah, that's it. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll catch you all in the next video. Make sure you hit the like button. Subscribe if you were new and enjoyed the content. And as per usual, leave a comment of which team you'd like to see me do for a postseason rebuild next video. Other than that, guys, I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace. <laughs>